Hello there and welcome to my channel. I'm Juliana Michaels and I'm so happy to have you join me. In this video I'm sharing part one of how I created the pillow box portion of the pillow box art journal I created for the Tim Holtz 2024 Sizzix Everyday Live. In part two I'll be sharing how I created the journal that fits inside the pillow box. Both videos will go live at the same time but I wanted to split them up so that the videos wouldn't be too much all at once. If you're interested in the supplies I've used to create this project, I have them linked in the description box below. When you shop through those links, you help support me and I appreciate that support so very much. Now let's get on with the making. So in this video, I'm gonna be working with some of the new dies from the Tim Holtz Sizzix. 2024 release and as you may or may not know he is doing a vault series which means that a lot of these new dies are based off of previously released dies that are now retired and he has chosen some of these different designs and then kind of reimagined them in the way he's combined them or, um, and then also has changed the sizes of them so that they were different from before too. So just lots of fun little changes he made. So um, if you have the old ones that are similar to this, they're not exactly the same, but, um, but if you don't have any of them, then these might be a new, a fun new addition for you to make to your collection. So first up for the project I'm gonna be working on today, I'm gonna be using um, this, these uh, three dies here and this is called vault scribbly butterfly and what I love about this one is that he's got two of the butterflies in this set and then the previous one had I think three or four butterflies and um, this one though he's added a kind of a shadow layer which I really really love that that's included with this set because I actually kind of wished it had been part of the original one so I'm so glad he did that for this one. Uh, next up is the um, funky floral wreath and yeah funky floral wreath and this um, again was there was like two wreaths in the set and it was just the wreaths by themselves and then the whole funky um, line of products so like there was other florals and things like that that kind of coordinated with this style uh, this wreath now is much larger and then it comes with some of these different flowers that um, maybe are based off of some in other sets um, but again I absolutely love the new size and um, yeah so last Thing I'm going to be working with is the um, vault pillow box and bag die so this creates a uh, pillow box and then this little um, like gift bag and then it's got two labels in there as well so we're going to be using this these dies to create the project so the papers I'm going to be using for this are a piece of black craft stock so it's got the craft and the you know, black on one side. We need a green, so that's just the green craft stock. And there are several different shades of green in that pack, so you know you can certainly pick the color that you prefer. I'm going to be working with a piece of distressed watercolor paper on the smooth side, a piece of craft card stock. You could use the craft stock, but I just find that it's a, almost a little too thick when trying to work with dies that need to be have any folding to them so this is just a little bit thinner and I bought it at my local craft store and then this is a piece of the wood grain distressed wood grain paper and as you can see it has a wood grain kind of already embossed into the paper the first thing I did off camera is I die cut two of the pillow box shapes which is what you would need to assemble this and what I'm going to do is um, assemble these and then I'm going to do some stamping to decorate the outside of the box and and I'm just going to use some headline tape here to 
adhere these together, but you can use, uh, you know, whatever kind of adhesive you prefer. And I just find that this holds really well. gonna line this up with the crease because this you can see there's just a little crease line here so that's you know we're gonna fold it over so we're gonna and then I'll just shut down and then that's ready to go and so then once we um, stamp this then you know, we'll just fold along all the creases to put it together. So what I'm gonna be doing next is just doing some like, what I kind of call like collage stamping with just a variety of stamps from my stash. I've just kind of picked some of my favorite, the theme that I'm kind of going with is a little bit of a botanical theme, but you could certainly go through and pick, you know, you know if you wanted more of a, masculine theme or a steampunk theme or whatever you could certainly go through so I've just picked different ones here um, that I'm going to be using so I've got field notes illustrated garden specimen theories bird feather tiny text on the farm entomology moth study and eccentric and again you don't need this many stamps for sure but these are just kind of the ones that I pulled out and then I'm also going to be using some stamping blocks and black soot archival ink. Um, and you know, if you don't have black soot archival ink, you could use other inks because um, if you prefer, but I, we are gonna be doing a little bit of distressing to this after we do the stamping. So the archival ink is perfect for that because it's not gonna bleed. So, um, all basically what I'm going to do is just start off, you know, picking some images and then just stamping them to decorate the cover of this. And, um, and then, yeah, let's go from there. So I will, you know, it's really just a matter of, you know, getting the image, you know, I bigger stamps. I kind of like to stamp the ink onto the stamp and then stamp it. And then with the smaller ones, you know, you can, and then it's really just a matter of kind of playing Tetris to fill in the design. I, you know, if you want to go different directions, um, however, you can also do, you know, if you wanted to stamp like a one big sheet of paper and then, um, and then cut these out, you could. I have done, I did it both ways as I was like kind of coming up with the idea for this. And I thought I would try it this way for the video. Um, but you can certainly do it either way. Like that's the only thing you're gonna have, you know, you'll have a little bit of a edge there. But I like the idea of the design kind of wrapping over the packaging or the pillow box there. So that was part of the reason why I decided to pick this um, pick this this um that's why I decided to pick this way of uh, doing the stamping. So 
So yeah. So, so this um, little images, I'm just gonna pick some from, this is from the entomology set. This was field notes and this was illustrated garden. And you, know, you can just kind of play around and put whatever images you like. You know, if you want to go different directions. And then, yeah, just kind of keep adding images till you fill it all in. And I'm not super worrying about this little flap here because that's going to be inside covered up. So don't really need to put anything on there. So here's a look at the stamping. So what I'm gonna do now is ink the edges with a little walnut stain, Distress Oxide. And you could certainly skip this part if you wanted to. So, Adhesive on this edge. And then you're just going to make sure that when you go to put these together that you want to get that fold it over this edge lined up with that one. Push it down. There you go. And there's your little pillow box. So now we're gonna finish inking these edges. And I'm gonna also so again, you're just going to push in on those where those creases are to put it together. And it's really that simple, you know, so if you didn't want to do all this stamping, you could really just, you know, cut this out of pattern paper and it would be beautiful. Be easy to create some cute little gift boxes. Okay, now 
now to add a little bit of interest to this, I'm going to pop this back open and we're going to spritz this with just a little bit of some water. And grab a paper towel here real quick. And I'm just going to get a little squirts. Give it a second there to do some work, and I'm going to dab it off, which that lifts off some of the ink and just adds a little interest to the piece. And then we're going to do the same thing on this side. A second there, dab it off. And then I'm just going to use my heat tool to you know, dry that water in the paper. So now that we have the box completed, I'm going to go over how to decorate it. So to do this off camera, I took the funky floral wreath and flowers die and I cut one out of some green craft stock and then this is a piece of distress watercolor paper to add some interest to this we're going to do a little bit of some ink smushing with peeled paint and forest moss distress ink and so all i'm doing is smushing the ink pad onto the craft mat spritzing it with a little water and then smushing the paper into the ink and then get something like that and then you just want to dry that before you move on to the next color you know, if you don't only want to use one color you can and to make this just a little more interesting you could dry it and then um, smush it back into what's left on your craft mat because and then that'll, that'll actually darken it up a little bit as well because the colors are going to be getting layered So, and then forest moss. Do the same thing. Just give it a little spritz, and then just tap it in. And you know, if you see spots that like maybe don't have anything on them like that, and you want a little color there, just dab it on. And then give it another dry. So I'm going to darken this up a little bit. You can add some more little spots here and there. That looks good. Okay. And I'll clean this up. And next, what I do is a scrap packaging and I'm going to um, take a sanding disc and I'm just going to very gently sand over this as you can see I'm trying I'm kind of pulling away from like these pieces that are long because if you're and I try to hold them where they're connected so that it doesn't tear the die cut while I'm doing this. I find it's best to just kind of go in one direction like that instead of trying to go back and forth like that unless you've got a really good solid thick place then then you can kind of get away with that back and forth motion but then yeah just kind of wipe that off and then you can see it reveals some of that craft paper that's printed that it's printed on and then we are going to layer those together onto the gift box so that's what we're doing with that. 
So off camera, I die cut the Scribbly Butterfly from the Black Craft Stock and then from the wood grain and the, like the shadow part from the wood grain. And, you know, like you can see here, it's got all those little pieces still in it. One of the ways I love to clean that out is to just take the little um, scrubby roller brush. And then this is actually the foam pad that comes with the um, stylus. So to do like the... Um, paper shaping. I prefer that one because it doesn't give as much, but it gives a little bit and you just roll over this and it gets out all those little pieces a little bit faster than having to do the pick. Plus it gets off a lot of those extra little bitty pieces that are on die cuts that just kind of make me a little bit crazy sometimes, but just part of the part of the deal. So that's just a little tip I thought I'd share with you. And then I am going to sand this piece as well, just like we did earlier. And I'm just going to gently rub over this, being very careful, especially with these thinner spots, like the antenna. I'm probably not even going to touch those. Maybe just hold it a little bit on the edges. But I just kind of find holding it and pulling it away from where I'm holding seems to be the safest way to do it. The other way that you can do this is if you save the negative piece that you cut this out of and put it back in that and then do the sanding, that is also another great way to kind of help protect uh, the die cut so that you don't tear it. All right, so that part's ready to go. And now for this part. All right, so next up, we've got the wood green butterfly and I'm just using some fossilized amber, uh, distress oxide ink and a blending brush. And just going to kind of ink this real good. I'm trying to go with like darker towards the outer edge of it. And then I use that to hold and then I'll take what's left here and just lightly color in the center. There we go. Nice thing about oxide inks is you they blend so nicely. You can kind of keep just play with it till you're happy with it there. And then to add a little interest to that, we're going to give it a spritz of water. And I'm going to dab off some of that ink. And then I'm going to just dry that with my heat tool. Okay. And then now we're going to ink the edges with some walnut stain distress ink. And I'm actually going to use this little finger sponge because I don't want to go too far on there. And as you could saw, like when I started putting it on, it was really too dark. So, you know, you can always kind of like wipe some of that off onto your um, craft mat so that you, it's not too dark. You can always add more. You just, you know, it's kind of hard to remove it once it's on there. And so then we're going to spritz that again. Kind of dab up some of these big, huge drops. 
and then dry that on a heat tool. And as you can see, it's really cool how the inks kind of react with each other, create those cool that coolness right there. I just love the way that looks. Get that all dry. And then kind of I'm gonna kind of re-darken those edges just a little bit with a um, walnut stain. Okay. And then if you want to brighten that yellow up a little bit more you can go back with the oxide ink and just kind of tap over that again. Not, I'm barely putting any ink on there, but you can kind of just brighten that up a little bit more if you want. And if that's too much, you could, um, you know, spritz it again with water, add a little more ink that way. But then all we're gonna do is just adhere this to the center and to do that I'm going to use um, some artiste glue and I just like this has this nice little thin tip which is with all these little design lines in here it's like it's just much easier to apply adhesive with this little tip and I'm not putting um, glue on the entire surface, just getting some of the bigger spots because this is pretty tiny. And just a little bit on the antennas so they don't break off. All right. Just center that on there. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this one of the little labels from that set and a piece of Distress watercolor paper. This is just a scrap from the die cutting I did earlier. And here I have some archival ink in peeled paint. And what you wanna do before you do this technique, because this is kind of like a letterpress type effect, you wanna make sure you clean off your dye with some rubbing alcohol just to get any of the oils and stuff that might still be on it from the manufacturing process and then once you do that dry it off and then what you're going to do is apply the ink to the dye now there's a couple of different ways you can do this you can use a brayer if you like I just um, find cleaning the brayer off afterwards just kind of makes me a little bit crazy so I just like to tap the ink pad onto the die and I actually find that the die almost kind of gets seasoned the more you do this so the first time you do it it might not be it doesn't want like the ink doesn't stick and again that comes back to like oils being left on it from the manufacturing process so you might want to do this like practice this a couple times just to get your dyes kind of seasoned and then what you're going to do is just place it on your um, paper and then just run it through your die cutting machine. And when you pick it up, as you can see, the ink gets transferred onto the paper and kind of gets pushed down into where the different, like there's kind of like these designs that are in the die. And so that the ink sits on that and then gets pushed down into that. And I think it just looks super cool. So very fun, a fun little technique, but, and super easy to do. To clean off your dye when you're done, all you need to do is just clean it off with some rubbing alcohol and it's good to go again. So to give this a little bit interest, I'm gonna do some ink smushing with some old paper. And spritz there and then we're just gonna do like we did before tap it into the ink and then dry it with the heat tool and 
you know, I'm holding these in my hands. My hands can handle quite a good amount of heat, but if your hands are really sensitive, just, you know, put something that's heat resistant underneath you and just, you know, you can dry it like this, or if you want to hold it with some tweezers, you can do that. So just do what's best for you when it comes to using the heat tools for sure. So let's just ink the edges of this with a little bit of walnut stain. And then last but not least, I'm just gonna use a little sentiment from this set. You know, you can pick anything that would fit in here. Just one life, use your wings, be authentic. Um, you know, make a wish, see the world. There's quite a few of them in here that will, that will fit in, you know, hello friend, best day ever that will fit inside here, so. And do this little choose to shine and get that inked up and stamp it here in the middle there we are so here's a look at the finished pillow box and this is the front of it with everything adhered and when I adhered the wreaths, I just kind of put adhesive here towards the center of them. Um, a little bit on the edge here, but not, not too much because I wanted it to, to have a little dimension to it. And then I adhered the butterfly with a little bit of some foam adhesive, as you can see there. And then I put the little label on the back here and I just trimmed off the edge of it and inked that and and then it's ready to go. So this is a great size for a like gift card fits in here perfectly. So it'd be perfect for any kind of gift wrapping and gift, uh, gift box. You know, you could put little treats in here, maybe some little candy bars or something. But I wanted to do something a little different. So inside my pillow box, I created a little mini journal. So I am going to walk you through this process on how to create this little journal in the next video. So stay tuned. I hope you enjoyed learning how this pillow box came together. Until next time, stay crafty, my friend. Thanks so much for watching. I'm so grateful for you. I was wondering if you could do me a quick favor and subscribe to my channel or leave me a thumbs up or a comment. If you're feeling extra generous, I'd love for you to share about my channel with your friends. All of these things help out us YouTubers so much, and it would mean so much to me to have your support.